Welcome to District 170's e-learning tutorial. This system is created to support your child as they um, participate in a snow day or an e-learning day. The first step is to click on the sign in button. After we click in the sign in button, the student has received a login and password information from their teacher and this will be typed into the system. I'm going to use a student from my class, her account, so you can see what your child's login will look like. So it will be the first initial, last name, and four digits, along with the at sd170.com login. Then you click the next button. The following screen is where you put your password in, which is also given to you by your teacher. And next. Now we can see we are in the Google home page. On the top right corner, we see an app button, and everything you need to access all of the learning material is right here in this app button. So we'll click on it now. The first window we will open will be the classroom. It is the green box with the yellow outline. Go ahead and open that in. Each teacher has created a folder, a digital learning folder for each child and it will be labeled in the Google Classroom library. They will be labeled e-learning day with your teacher's homeroom teacher. Go ahead and open that window by clicking on the words e-learning. And this is the student view and home page similar to a Facebook feed where we have the title of the room. On the top we see a stream button, classwork, and people. The stream button has a run list of different activities that your child's teacher has provided that they would like them to explore on a day when we are at home instead of in the classroom. We're able to do many different subjects here. Um, for example, I have listed a typing assignment, a writing assignment, some math work. All of this will be individualized um, by your child's teacher. When you want to open an assignment, you will click on the box and when you start to touch it you can see it starts to turn a little bit of a shade darker and you know you're in the right area. Once you've opened that window you will see the direction given by the teacher. For example this direction says use your Google account to open story jumper site, create characters, settings, and build a digital book. So the student would open this website, perform that operation, and as soon as they're done with that assignment they can click mark as done and then the teacher would get a notification letting you know that that assignment was complete. If you had a question and you wanted to ask your teacher a question about that assignment, this is the area that the child could type a message and um, the teacher would receive that and then be able to communicate back in this same area. So that's an example of one of the sites. We can return back to the main page by clicking this link that says eLearning Day. There are a variety of different assignments here, and um, your, each child will be different. Another important feature um, on this page is the People button. In this area, you'll be also able to email the teacher with any questions that you have. So there are two areas to communicate with the teacher here. Some of the assignments might direct the child to open their reading book, their science book, or their social studies book. So this next step in the directions, I will show you how to open those textbooks. We'll return over here to the app button in the corner and click it. We'll scroll down to the bottom of the apps, and on the very bottom, we will see a quilt-like app that says Pearson Easy Bridge. So just to open it, you just click on it. The Pearson Easy Bridge will provide us um, access to our science, social studies, and reading materials. We can see that the window is opening. We have a spinning dial usually. Sometimes it takes a moment. One aspect that I really like about this system is that the student can listen to the book be read aloud to them. And this is a great read even on a non-learning non-snow day or non learning day where children might want to, um, you know, relearn a lesson in class and just hear it all the time. 
notes. So um, this is available to you any day. Okay, here we go. The um, Pearson Easy Bridge window has opened and we see we have reading, science, and social studies. There are two ways to open these materials. Um, under the reading, if we click down, we'll see the reading book will open, the science book is located here, and the social studies book is here. There is another way to open all of these resources. We could just click right here, or we can open the Pearson Realize button. This is the way I'm going to um, demonstrate. I, I like this view a little better. It's a little bit more user friendly. So we'll open the Pearson Realize button, which will um, provide access to our reading and social studies materials. This is really great because we use many different books in reading class. Sometimes we have novels or, or short poems. Um, sometimes we use a, a textbooks that has a lot of different materials inside of it. And all of those books are available here digitally with Pearson Realize in the EasyBridge window. They can be read aloud to the students. Um, and this is a great resource if you have more than one child in a family and you want to gather more than one person around a computer, you can put it on the speaker and the book can be read aloud. So we can see that the Pearson Easy Bridge is opening, and here we go. These three circles um, have different purposes. We have the browse window, classes, and grades. And it is the browse window that we'll focus on right here. And to open the reading book, we'll just click on the reading book picture in notes. Your child's teacher might direct them to open a particular unit. Um, we can open unit two. Each unit has different materials and um, the uh, real-time assignment we have going to be in class that day. We might use the same material that we're using at home and using digitally. We could open module A, which is another section of the book. And here we see the in the fifth grade curriculum the textbook Road to Freedom. This text collection is a collection of small stories and poems. The sleuth section has, um, small, has small articles with questions and answers. And then we have some learning games the students can play and learn as we are at home or at school. Um, so I won't open all of these now, but this is the way that you would open those. To return back to the Pearson Realize homepage, we would just click on the top button here where it says Pearson Realize. And then we can go to our social studies book. And just like the reading book, they'll show us each chapter. So if we're on chapter three, settlements take root in fifth grade. We can see lesson by lesson, the materials are available to us. The students can um, interact with images, videos, and um, other classroom materials here by just clicking on the window. They can take small quizzes, and all of this material gets sent directly to your child's teacher. The assignments would be given in the Google Classroom app, um, and then they would be completed here in the reading, science, or social studies windows. Okay, so the social studies um, assignment is opening now. So it just takes a moment. Hit this refresh button. Sometimes it will move it along. So we turn back to the easy tab for the science material. The science button is located in the Pearson Success Net button. And the science has um, really similar activities that the, science, the reading and social studies, but in addition to that, they have vocabulary activities as well as digital um, experiments that the students can observe and um, explore. So we'll just wait for this window to open. Here we go. So the science homepage has a lot of different um, 
schools. The area we're going to pick here to begin is this explore area. Each of the chapters will appear in, um, in boxes and we'll click on the box in each subject to access that chapter. So let's see, go ahead and open chapter eight on services. And we can um, open each and every chapter of that book. Um, and there are experiments and other activities embedded here. Okay, so now we can return back to the e-learning page where we began our journey. <laughs> and there was one last thing that I'd like to show you, and that is on the District 70 homepage, they have created um, a support support page for parents in the event you are at home and you have trouble logging in. So to access the district page, you would type www.sd170. And here on the home page, um, there are many resources for District 170. Under the resource button, we're going to click e-learning. on the menu tab on the side. We have the resource button. And here is our e-learn support page. There is an informational letter describing what e is. Under that letter there are frequently asked questions, some things you might be wondering about e-learning. You can check this out. Here is the tech support button. So if you are trying to open your child's account and perhaps they've forgotten their login or password, you can open this and there will be somebody on the other, the other side waiting to answer your questions. Um, here they will ask you for a um, email address that you'd like to be communicated with um, your student's first name, last name, the school they attend, and the student account um, if you don't know your student account, that's okay. They can still um, answer your questions here, and this will be the submit button you would choose. Um, then you would be you would be responded to here through this email address you you provide. Finally, there's a resource bank. So if you are at home on a snow day and your child does not remember their login information, many of these resources are the similar things that you would find on your child's teacher's um, Google Classroom page. So you can feel free to open and access any of these by simply clicking on the button and it would open the website to provide materials. I hope that this tutorial was helpful and that your e-learning experience is a pleasant one. Thank you for your time.